says, somebody said, well, why do you wear sunglasses when you play? And he said, because I cry when I play my slow movement. So, I mean, I had to make sunglasses for him. But, you know, that depth of emotion and the artistry, it's so pure and rare, you know. And to me, that's like big stuff. I just like, hey, who does that? These guys are real. You know, I've been interested in the Delta Blues for since I was a teenager. And that was the 60s, and that's when these guys were making kind of a comeback. Really, on the folk circuit. When I moved to Memphis, when I joined the Coast Guard, they sent me to Memphis to do, go to the Navy school. Well, lo and behold, I ran into some of these guys playing. When I graduated from the school, I got stationed in New Orleans. And there, it was, you know, that was in the 70s. And, you know, I saw Muddy Waters play in a small bar. You know, you could touch him. You know, and all these guys I saw working there, a lot of those guys were right there. You know, and they, they were touring, you know, just making some money. They were all old. Some of them were dying off. I saw Lightning Hopkins before he died. Roosevelt Sykes, Furry Lewis. I mean, you know, and, uh, you know how it is, live music, really, you know, it's like, it's like seeing art in the first person. It's completely different than a recording or a photograph. You know, the experience is so full. And to get to hear these guys would be right there. And, you know, it just really impacted me. So I was always a big fan of their stuff. You know, I've always been. And then, uh, you know, I, years later I became a sculptor. I was having success. But I wanted, you know, I thought, you know, really, the, the, the main thing about being a human being is a human emotion. You know, really, that's the essence of being human, you know. And the hardest thing to grasp, I mean, you know, it's always never have a really good hand on it. Like I say, I, I realized it was the human face that was what I needed to figure out. And so, um, then it was how to do it. And so I essentially, what I did is I broke down the face like into sections, right? You know, and then I would just make a section and then weld it together. I decided that to work all that out by building a substructure or a cage, essentially. And then I would just map out the features of the space and then fill them in but what that did it I could work out all the problems when it was in this stage and adjust it and everything because you can see it and then I figured you know what finish to put on them and uh, just like you take uh, an old cast iron frying pan and blacken it right it's just the same thing. I take a big torch and heat it up, and I paint old oil on there. It's an uh, uneven finish, because it just goes where the, the heat and the conditions, it's pretty random. I figured some things out, uh, you know, about how to shade it, but it's got a randomness to it that I, that I like. I think it really represents life well, that randomness of life. And uh, it gives it a lot of interest. And with these guys, it's perfect. It's a perfect finish. I really just really hit on it. And I was like, oh. Like when it, when it all comes together, you go, oh, man. You know? You know, it's like a happy day. It's a long process from beginning to end. But, you know, I listen to their music. I read their biographies. And, you know, I feel like by the time I'm done with them, I feel like I know them. You know? I feel like I've drank beer with them, and, you know. It's like, I feel like uh, they deserve to be recognized, you know. They deserve to be memorialized in some fashion. And uh, like where rock and roll came from and all that. Where did Elvis Presley get his jobs from these guys, you know. He knew about them. And they never got any credit because they were black and poor. So that's the whole thing, you know, and then after I started making them, I sent some pictures to the Delta Blues Museum in Clarksdale. 
They really, the director got back to me and he said that they really love them. Would I like to have a show there? And I did. And it was great. It was a great thing. It was, uh, you know, those people there, this is their, uh, their heroes. This is their people. You know, this is where, you know, they came from there. And it's like, uh, they're great artists. And so they know who they are. And they, you know, really look up to them. They know who they are. They were so appreciative to me. And uh, I never, nobody has ever been that appreciative of my work before. And it was honest. You know, it was unpretentious. It was real. It really, uh, it really touched me. And so, until I got addicted to making them, <laughs> which I still am, I'm just going to keep making them. I just, I can't stop now. There's so many of them, and they all deserve it. You know, there's so many good, great artists, and they're all dead now, really, pretty much. It's just amazing to me, the whole story about it. It's all emotion. It's all, the whole thing is emotion. It's not structure. It's not, it's so long because it fits on a recording well. It's, that came later from producers, not from the artists. They get mad at him. They say, "Play this song," and they play it. And they say, "Well, that's not how you played it the other night." Well, I never play it the same way twice. You know, I play it how I feel now. You know, man, that's you just. Those days are over, unfortunately. But it's so pure to me, and so how it really should be as art. You know. Where we live in now, there's no real room for that, you know, unfortunately. So, so in that way, to me, it kind of lives on through these guys, which is part of it for me. We all need to remember that sometimes. We forget everything is viewed on a phone, you know, and sadly, and there's lots of good things about that, but. There's a lot of things that aren't so good too. That we shortcut ourselves of experience and we we'll get the just taste of it on a digital representation. But it is what it is.